Beyond the mountains in the far west of Ethiopia is one of the country's lesser known treasures. Gambela National Park was created in 1973. 5,000 square kilometers of wilderness landscape that teems with wildlife. But over the years, the park's boundaries and the wildlife within it were gradually encroached upon. So Ethiopia's Wildlife Conservation Authority decided it was time to make a stand. Protecting and developing the park is their responsibility, and marking its boundaries is the first step. In the long run, properly managed, Gambela could be a major national asset for Ethiopia. Ethiopia has 14 national parks and four animal sanctuaries. These protected areas are at present undergoing a major review, and Gambela is causing most excitement. The region shares an important border with the Republic of South Sudan, a fact that's at the heart of plans for developing the park. The final goal is to establish a peace park between Southern Sudan and Ethiopia, and so the animals can easily move from one country to other country. A marriage in the management of two adjoining national parks would help to preserve the continuing ebb and flow of wildlife between them. Viewed on one level as a renewable resource with commercial possibilities, Gambela's National Park has potential for development in an increasingly popular area, ecotourism. The ecology here is exceptionally diverse. Ancient forest, wetlands and savanna grasslands are home to a wide variety of wildlife. It seems almost a crime not to share it with the rest of the world. The secrets of this remote wilderness remain hidden. But Ethiopia's Wildlife Conservation Authority believes it's only a matter of time before the special magic of Gambela is more widely known and tourist revenue from a properly managed park is able to fund its upkeep. The Barrow River is the lifeblood of Gambela. It flows from here into South Sudan, eventually to join up with the White Nile. The waters of the Barrow are at the heart of life in both the region and the bustling provincial capital. Located in a back street of this lively market town, where few outsiders set foot and tourism is virtually unknown, is the regional office of Yuka, Ethiopia's Wildlife Conservation Authority. It's from here that Gambela National Park is managed, and remnants of some of its regular inhabitants are on display. Over the years, some species have diminished in numbers, but others are thriving, as park warden Gatloak Rolkier explains. The key species are white ear fox, mammoth, buffaloes, 
Ronald Lowe, Kim, Graf, Redbug, Watok, Elephant, are the main speeches. With a total of 30 scouts in the field and just two operational vehicles, Gatloak's team is expected to patrol and monitor thousands of square kilometers of parkland, protecting and preserving it against all eventualities. It's a tall order. Yet even when power cuts make the printer useless and the fridge a luxury too far, the team remains firmly connected to the task in hand. At one time, an indifference to the value of wildlife was born of ignorance. Today in Gambella, that attitude is confined to history. Under new management with a new vision, what has been a paper park for nearly 40 years is being transformed into a properly managed, protected area. In effect, the rebirth of Gambella National Park. Deciding precisely where it should be and what shape is the first priority. A field study by experts has suggested that an area 4,000 square kilometers in size stretching to the border with South Sudan is the optimum shape for a new park. One of Yuka's main supporters is the Horn of Africa Regional Environment Center based at Addis Ababa University. Dr. Araya Asfar is its director. The wildlife conservation or the ecosystem conservation in this region requires the cooperation of the two governments. And also uh, it requires the active role of uh, the community-based organizations that are working in this region. The Yuka horek partnership works well and there are social concerns in their delicately woven plan of action that reflect a holistic approach to conservation. We have to deal with the issue of livelihood, how the people in that, in that region benefit from the uh, wildlife conservation. In Gambella, livelihood and landscape are inextricably linked. With water, the indispensable major resource. Like the animals in the wild, fishermen, farmers and herders rely totally on rainfall and the rivers that deliver it. Fortunately, there's no shortage of water in Gambella. But in some areas, there is competition, both traditional and newly emerging, for land. There are issues of um, agriculture expansion in the region. So we try to have the scientific data on how to balance nature conservation with development. To achieve this, Yuka's team under Warden Gatloak worked with a task force of experts who were commissioned to make a comprehensive ecological study of the region. What we should really try and do in a San Van Aast, head of parks and protected areas at Horek, coordinated the mission. We feel now is a good time to, to integrate different land use options before um, only one is considered and other land use options are compromised forever. In the following weeks, aspects of local life that impact on the flora and fauna of the Gambella landscape came under the close scrutiny of the task force. And some major discoveries about migratory animals, like the white-eared cob, astonished everyone. Each year, at least a quarter of a million of these graceful antelopes cross from South Sudan into Ethiopia and back again. It's the second largest mammal migration in Africa, after the famous wildebeest migration of the Serengeti. Why the cob make their annual move in such numbers is no mystery to Warden Gatloek. Gambela is wetland, but the jungle is upland area. 
during the, the wet season, most of the cock will migrate to dry area. During the dry season, they will come here to search for water and grass. The mass migration of white-eared cob is by no means all that Gambella has to offer. Endangered species like the Nile lechwe share a home in the park with the magnificent shoe-billed stork, whose graceful flight belies the absurdly unaerodynamic shape of its head. These are just two remarkable creatures in a wide spectrum of wildlife that has made Gambella home. Accurately surveying the complex environmental picture of Gambella is a challenge for conservation expert Howard Frederick. But he has successfully profiled the ecology of many wilderness landscapes. And given the right data, Howard's computer will do the same for Gambella. Thanks to the South Sudan program of the Wildlife Conservation Society, pilot Falk Roseman, a veteran conservationist, flew the team on two sorties a day for nearly a month. Specialist observers on board noted and collated the diversity of wildlife on the ground below. The numbers impressed Howard Frederick. There's a ton of wildlife. There's so much. The white-eared cob are spread over a very, very large area. And they've moved up into some areas uh, further east and south than we were expecting to find them. And when you have a migratory species, actually figuring out where they go to so you can design a protected area for them is a huge, huge discovery for us. Suddenly you're getting to the edge of this amazing swamp. And you've got herds of buffalo, we do 50 to 200 buffalo. I think we saw six herds. We had a group of 160 Lechwe, now Lechwe, which is the biggest anybody has ever heard of. And all the animals in this landscape are dependent on access to water and certain kinds of resources. And I saw my personal uh, largest group of roan ever. Roan only see five or six, we saw 70 in one group. It was amazing. Other species, we've seen sign of a lot of elephants in some areas. There's plenty of evidence of them on the ground. You can see their tracks in the air quite clearly. When the Gambella Task Force produced its first draft report, its findings suggested the possibility of a win-win situation for all parties involved. There's an incredible opportunity to integrate the different land use options, including commercial farming, fisheries, different forms of protected lands, Community conservation area would be one of those forms. The possibility of integrated land use is music to the ears of those who must help to feed the country. Formerly, uh, wildlife used to be one arm of the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. So it is our concern to take care of the environment so that all development, particularly agricultural development, is in compliance with the current climate change, the current uh, soil and water conservation. Today's uh, wetland is also one of the resources where Ethiopia really cherish and want to share with, with other parts of the world as, as a heritage of uh, natural resource. It seems there's no practical reason why conservationists, farmers, herders and investors cannot each have a stake in Gambella's rich land and move forward together in a planned way.
In a country that's just beginning to realize how much natural beauty and unique wildlife it actually has, ecotourism is becoming a very attractive commercial proposition. Ethiopia is at present way behind its African neighbors as a popular destination on the ecotourist trail. And Gambela is far behind the rest of the country, where ancient cities and historic monuments pull in the visitors. But there is here the opportunity to exploit a natural advantage. Times are changing fast, and in the current struggle to combat global warming and climate change, green business is good business. Investing in nature and renewable resources has popular support on the world stage. There are several ecotourist lodges in Ethiopia. They're always sited at prime locations surrounded by the best that nature can offer. And there are more being developed. By definition, wilderness areas are usually difficult to access. And so remote areas like Gambela need the right infrastructure to become more readily accessible. And that is precisely what's happening right now. Things are moving apace to put the region firmly in touch with the outside world. It's a bold and impressive investment in the future that will surely pay dividends at the end of the road. In the new park, there are plans for alternative means of travel. We have an idea to make proposal for motorboat because the area is wetland. And during the wet season, it's difficult to make patrolling and to see the condition of animals. Yuka's plans for the new park need all the support they can get. So a party of influential guests that includes state ministers, foreign ambassadors, distinguished academics and a leading conservationist from African Parks Network are invited to see for themselves Gambella's treasures. Warden Gatwek has organized aerial tours which the VIPs will take in turns. There's a keen air of anticipation. There is limited available time in the air, so Warden Gatlowak is praying that the animals are not too far away. They don't disappoint, and there are plenty of photo opportunities for the visitors. It's most important that the guests see everything that affects Yuka's conservation plans for the Gambella landscape. And that includes the latest developments in agriculture. On their return, the dignitaries revealed their impressions at a press conference. This is really the cycle of life. It is, you see it teeming with a chain of, 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 of natural phenomena and uh, but you also see how, how fragile it is, how um, if, you, if you intervene in one place, it will have consequences for the, for the cycle. It's extremely impressive. It's probably the highest concentration of wildlife uh, you can find in Ethiopia. What I learned today is that commercial farming and 
uh, wildlife management can perfectly go together. And in fact, they should go together to the benefit of the country and to the benefit of the people. That's what I learned today. I also have seen something I've never seen before, which is this white earth cob migration. It's phenomenal. So I'd like to encourage the Ethiopian authorities to protect it forever. Now we have uh, finalized the redemarcation of the Gambilla National Park. So this is a big news for donor uh, as well as for uh, conservation community. Our country would like to develop economic development with the conservation. We know that the Gambella has a huge potential. We want to keep and conserve this natural wonder. For a generation of young Ethiopians, the future in Gambella looks to be full of promise. Traditional trades and local crafts will get a new lease of life, and things can only improve for everyone throughout the region when tourism eventually comes this way. The legacy of a paper park from 1973 may prove one day to be an invaluable investment for Ethiopia. And of course, with proper care, it will always have at its heart the renewable treasure of flourishing wildlife.